everyone. Welcome back to Podmas. This is day 16. And thank you so much for coming back. If you were here with us yesterday, we were talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly about live streaming. And sometimes live streaming or not, yes, things can get ugly online. So today we are going to be tackling a subject and it's how to love your haters or how to deal with your haters. And so let's just go ahead and dive into it because I'm not quite sure how else to go about it other than to say, if you are brand new and starting out and you know, you're getting less than 15, 20 views on a video, there's a high likelihood that most of the people who are watching maybe friends, family, whatever, but they're not going to be haters and they're not going to be mean. And it seems that the more subscribers that you start to get, the more the haters and the trolls are going to start coming in. So one way that you know that you've started to make it is when you make someone so angry that they're going to leave a comment on your account and they're going to be saying something either about how you look, how the video is, um, just general hatred. And it, it's going to boggle the mind and you're going to like, wow, this person is so strange that they took time out of their day to write this novel about how I'm fat or ugly or stupid or I sound a certain way when I speak. And it's going to, the first few, they are going to stick with you for days and weeks. And it's just going to be like bad to your soul. And like, it's crushing. And you're like, wow, I just wanted to share something that I thought was cool with the world. And here comes this person that just hates it. And maybe they hate me. And maybe I need to stop making videos. And all this stuff is going to run through your head. And I'm not sure how else to say, congratulations, you're graduating to a new level of <laughs> the echelons of YouTube space, except to say, congratulations, you've engaged someone and triggered them to the point where they needed to interact with you in a certain way. So let's talk about some ways that you can deal with your hater. So the first thing, dissect their comment. Are they saying that your video sucks because they can't hear you? Well, maybe that's something you can work on. Maybe you can upgrade your audio. You know, if you're lo looking at your video versus someone else's video and say, is my volume level off? Are my words not clear? Is the voiceover muddy? Like, is that, if you look at the heart of it and they're complaining about the audio, is there something constructive that you can change? That might be something. Or if they say, wow, your lighting is just all over the place. It doesn't look good. I can't even like look at it. Is there something with the color grading? Is there something with the Kelvin light setting that you could tweak that would make your videos be a little bit more appealing? It's possible that those haters are trying to give you a valuable piece of information that will end up making your video better. So just because they happen to wrap it in a not nice way, it's possible that they're trying to help you in a weird way, okay? So that's one thing that you can do. Now, another thing that I highly, highly encourage people to do, YouTube has the ability to build a library of restricted words or phrases that if you don't want to see them, you don't want to read them, you don't want them coming through, you can start to build this library. And I have to say thank you to some of my trolls and haters because when they come up with something really creative that I didn't even know could be used as a racial slur, I open up my sheet and I add that term that they've used to this dictionary that I have. And I say, that's a new one. Thank you. Although, you know, sometimes those comments, they can make you cry, but you have to be like, you got to give it to them for being creative and persistent. But what happens when you have a library of blocked words and phrases? It could be something like sub for sub or check out my channel or ugly, disgusting, overweight, fat, you know, any of these more... Uh, obvious words that usually aren't used in a positive way, you can build those into your library so that they're either marked as spam or f like held for potential review. And that's one way that you don't have to look at your main wall and see that these comments are being left where people are looking at them and they're just saying horrible, horrible things about you. And as far as the person who's left the comments, they think that, you know, they're getting to you because if they log into their account, they can probably still see that the comment is there, just that you haven't responded to it. But in reality, someone else looking at the video isn't going to see that comment because it's being held for review. One of the things I think that a lot of the trolls are looking for, they're looking for attention. They want to get a rise out of you. They may want to get into a fight with you online. And you know, there's always some common characteristics of some of these trolls as well. They usually are not brave enough to have their own profile photo on their on their account, or it's a celebrity or something like that, where you know it's obviously not that person. A lot of the time they're gonna have like spelling mistakes and just grammar mistakes, and it's gonna be pretty obvious sometimes that they're doing it just to be mean. 
And if you go and look at their accounts, maybe they're subscribed to a whole bunch of channels that um, that are completely different and make no sense. And if you started to look, they're probably leaving mean comments on lots of channels or um, you'll see that they have no videos. It's always, is that not always the thing where all these people who are criticizing you online, they may think they're experts because they watch a lot of YouTube. I bet they've never once made a video because you go click on their videos and you're like, oh, you think you can do it so much better. Let's go look at your videos and make sure they're so much better than mine. They never have any content. You always go and it says this user has no videos, but they just are so quick to tear you down. And it's just like, you know what? Come on now. And one thing I look at when I go to the haters is <laughs> I go, I will go look at their channel. And if they have zero subscribers, zero videos, right? and they've got nothing, no content on their channel, no banner, anything like that, how seriously can I take it? Like if someone who has 100,000 subscribers wanna come, wants to come to my channel, give me constructive criticism and maybe says it in a mean way, I'm gonna be like, you know what? This person has more subscribers. They probably know something that I don't. Maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the person who's hating on me or giving me advice. You know what I mean? There's like, you don't wanna take sometimes advice from a person about how to grow your channel when they have 50 subscribers. And I understand that the information could be correct, but there's something disingenuous about you telling me how to grow my channel to 100,000 subscribers when you have 50 subscribers. And so I don't know if I can believe you as much if you don't have a channel that already has 100,000 subscribers versus I can regurgitate everything that Sean Cannell, Benji Travis, Nick Nimmin, Brian G. Johnson, I can regurgitate everything that they're saying, but if I'm not bringing you a channel that has X amount of subscribers and I'm not getting a lot of video views, who am I to go out there and give you a whole bunch of advice about how to get subscribers and how to get your channels noticed? You know what I mean? It's always, it's interesting because I'm not going to put myself in a position to give out that kind of advice without trying to experience some of it myself. And I do think it's a little bit unfair, but I can't tell you how to get to 100,000 subscribers when I'm at, you know, 30,000 subscribers. I just don't think it would be necessarily right. I could give you some general principles of, of best practices. It's not the same as my friend Kimberlea, who has 215,000 subscribers. You're probably going to want to listen to her. She probably has a, a little bit more experience than I do. And I know that that's not always like fair because there's lots of information out there. And a lot of the people who are giving it are very smart, but there's just this weird level that some people aren't gonna bleed them unless they have a certain amount of viewership, I guess you could say. So one thing with hater comments, you also have to understand a lot of the time those comments are not about you. You are just the scapegoat for the vehicle that taking out their anger on, right? A lot of the people who are troll accounts, they're teenagers and they are saying vile and disgusting things and they know that it's gonna bother you, but it it's like fun for them. It's a game for them. And so you have to realize they don't know you. And if you had to come up to that person on the street, there's probably not one of those people who are writing these kinds of comments about how ugly you are and how just dumb you sound. They're not gonna come up to you on the street and find you and say, hey, Shelly, I think you're dumb and you're stupid and you're ugly because people don't talk to each other like that in real life. And these people, they don't know you. They don't know your life. They don't know your family. They don't know your circumstances. And I think it's just really interesting that people forget that everyone online and everyone who's typing, we're all humans. And I think that people forget that. And I think that people online all of a sudden become, you know, they're, it's not that they're untouchable, but it's because people tend to react to negativity more than positivity. Sometimes a lot of those haters think the only way I can get someone to interact with me is if I say something just horrific and atrocious. If I say something super mean, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of people to interact with me and possibly even the creator. And even that attention is better than saying so many complimentary things and never getting any attention. And it's a weird backwards way to think about it, but our mind does tend to gravitate. You could get a hundred nice comments, you get two bad ones, they stick with you and you wanna say something to those people, right? And you have to understand that some of the people who are leaving these comments, they are never going to be convinced. And it's not worth getting into some of these huge arguments with people because it's very rare that you're gonna go into that kind of situation and change someone's mind about how they feel about something. You could be extremely, extremely well-versed in a subject matter. You could explain and articulate your points so clearly and it doesn't matter. Then they're just gonna come back with something like you're stupid or I don't believe you or those sites and references aren't real. And you know what I mean? It's like, it's not that they're wanting to be convinced. That's not why they're on the channel. That's not why they're making their comment. They just want 
a place for their rage to be heard. They want a place where they can let their crazy out. And it just happens to be you and your channel, unfortunately. And I'm sorry about that. So you have to understand it's not usually about you because they don't know you. They only know a little bit about what you put about yourself on the internet. And it's different. It's different. People don't do that to you in real life. I was on a panel actually with um, Barnacle's Nerdgasm. And he was saying, He loves to engage the trolls because almost every other person on the panel says, I block them, I mute them, I delete them. You know, I don't let them, because I control my comment section, I don't let them continue to act like that on my channel and I control my comments and the tone of it. So I just, I say, nope, uh uh-uh, you're not allowed to be on my channel, you're not allowed to be in my comments and I'm just done with it. He had a really interesting way of looking at it. He said, I love when I get a comment like that And he's been on the platform a lot longer and he has almost a million subscribers. And I I was wondering about this too. And he's like, you would not believe some of the comments I get because, you know, he's a little bit larger of a guy. He's been on the internet a long time. He's very energetic and some people don't like that. And so he'll say, when I get a comment like that and they've had all this vitriol, he'll look at it and he'll type, tell me more. And he says, most times they get so angry, they come back and they leave more comments. And then he reads it and then he says, really? Tell me more. And the reason why he's doing this is because it's engaging people to make more and more comments on his on his video. And I thought about this later because YouTube doesn't really care if the comments that are on your video are positive or negative. They don't really care if there's a lot of thumbs up, a lot of thumbs down. I think the, you know, the record breaking YouTube rewind with the 10 million dislikes. It's not like they really care about the video of getting that many thumbs down because a lot of people are still watching it, they're still engaging with it. And really in the end, what they want is engagement. They want people to you know, come back to the video and watch it, have longer session times. They want them to watch more videos by the creator. They want people to leave comments and they want people to interact by liking the video or sharing the video. And so even if you get someone to stay on your video, just keep coming back and leaving these mean comments, it's actually doing you a favor and bumping you up in the algorithm. And so it's almost like the haters are becoming your lovers of helping you you make your channel actually seem like it's doing better because you're getting so many comments on a video and this video must be doing really well. Let's push it up in the algorithm. And so the haters are almost doing you a favor in a way just by spewing negativity. Now that's up to you if you want to let that continue on your channel. But I just thought that was an interesting way that he was looking at it. He's always just like, tell me more, keep going. What else? Anything that causes the the conversation to keep going and for them to kind of um, keep engaging. And he said, most of the time they just get bored and leave or, you know, uh, they find something else to yell about. He's like, but I don't really care. It's no skin off my back. And then, so that's another thing you could do. You could look for ways to continue the conversation and keep the engagement up. And (laughs) that's an interesting way to look at it. And like I said, um, sometimes the people that are leaving comments, there is something constructive at the heart of it, you know, and it could be something like, oh my God, all I ever see is sponsored posts. Don't you ever do something that isn't a sponsored post? That might be an indicator that your people and your audience are tired of seeing such an obvious way of being sold to. And it might be time for you to back off from some of the sponsored posts for a while. You know, some of that, they may be saying something, there could be something at the heart of it, okay? And then of course, other ways to respond, you can block, (laughs) you can, you know, you can mute them from your channel and you can just make sure that they're not seen on your channel, I would highly recommend you build that library up of phrases. And and really, you just have to understand the more video views you get, the more thumbs down. I remember like being so upset. I'm like, what did I do to make people just not like me or thumbs down my video or leave a mean comment? And you have to think about it that like even something as simple as like the president of the United States, people vote for him, but half of the people um, in the world don't like him and have to and you're never going to win over everyone and i think that one of the hardest parts for some creators is that they want to be liked by everyone and they don't like the feeling that a whole bunch of people out there in the world don't like them i'm definitely that way because i am a people pleaser and i want people to like me so it bothers me immensely if i feel like people don't like me but as i'm going on in the youtube career i'm realizing you can't please everyone. And that's not your job. Your job is to connect with people in a real and authentic way. And your audience is going to hopefully like and respect you for it. And as you weed through the trolls and haters, you will then end up just with more people that love you as a community and are fine with the way that you present yourself and the way that you talk about 
subjects and you'll have less hopefully and less of those people that don't engage with that type of content. So I hope that gives you a few ways to think about how to love the haters, how to keep going when people are hating on you. And if you have any um, feelings on haters and trolls and best practices that you use to ignore them or deal with them, drop it as a comment on this podcast because I would love to hear them because I'm definitely curious as well to learn how people deal with their haters because sometimes, yes, it gets me down. It gets me down and I will be thinking about a comment that someone has like left for days or longer. And I've even gone so far as I will take screenshots of them (laughs) and I'll save them in a folder on my phone. Sometimes they're like funny because I'll be in Facebook groups and they're like, tell me about your craziest like hater comment and I'll post mine on the screen and people will be like, oh my God. And it's the same like when I see theirs and I'm just like, oh, that's a bad one or something. But sometimes it's comical. Sometimes it's just like, it will, it's going to make you cry. But um, yeah, I'm definitely curious to hear your guys' thoughts on it. So drop a, a comment on the podcast if you want to. And I hope you guys are enjoying Podmas. I will see you all tomorrow. Thanks guys. Bye-bye. That's going to wrap it up for today's Podmas episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed our time together, I would love it if you gave a five-star review on whatever listening platform you are tuning in from. I do not take our time together for granted. I know you could be anywhere and listening to anyone and you chose to spend your time with me and I really appreciate that. I will see you in a Podmas episode very soon. Thanks guys. Bye.